we were talking about these uh, national air quality standards and just kind of looking at some of the pollutants. Now we understand where the carbon monoxide comes from, incomplete burning of fossil fuels. We understand where the nitrogen dioxide comes from. It's a secondary pollutant that's a result of the nitrogen monoxide um, reacting with the volatile organic compounds that are coming out of the tailpipe. Now let's take a look at ozone. Ozone is a nasty, nasty um, pollutant, as you can see here. The, the exposure rates um, are very low, so that means it's very harmful. Um, and so let's take a look at uh, where does ozone come from? So far uh, in my combustion reactions, I haven't seen ozone as a product, so I want to know where it comes from. Now, first of all, we got to get our heads straight about ozone. Um, you have uh, probably heard of ozone and problems um, with the ozone layer and we're, you know, that the ozone's going away and that's a bad thing. And right now I'm telling you that having ozone is a bad thing. Well, it depends on where the ozone is. And as you may be aware, the atmosphere um, is divided into different layers. Um, and right here you can see the, the layer of the atmosphere that we live in is called the troposphere. And the troposphere goes up about um, nine miles up, well above the highest mountain. Okay, the troposphere goes about nine miles up. Then the next layer is called the stratosphere. That's about a 20 mile layer above the earth. And then above that even further is the mesosphere. All right, the ozone layer that protects us from harmful sun's radiation is actually a very wide swath of the part of the stratosphere, okay? So um, the ozone that we're talking about right now is the ozone that exists in the troposphere right down at ground level, all right? We're gonna talk about stratospheric ozone next, next unit and uh, you know the value of the ozone in the stratosphere. Right now we're talking about ozone that's created in the troposphere as part of um, human activities, especially the burning of fossil fuels. So you want to understand where it comes from, why it's a problem, so we can know how to avoid it and how to reduce the problem, okay? All right, so we're going to talk about tropospheric ozone and why it's bad. All right, first of all, the problem with the troposphere, you know, what is the problem with troposphere? Trop troposphere ozone or tropospheric ozone, ozone that's down here at ground level. Well, ozone itself is, um, is what we call, or well, I'll write the formula for it, it's O3. Um, ozone is what we call an allotrope of oxygen. Oxygen, elemental oxygen normally exists. The dominant form of oxygen, uh, you know, in our environment is in the form of O2. That's the stable elemental form of oxygen. But sometimes we can have elements that exist in different forms, and that's called an allotrope. For example, carbon. Carbon can exist in nature, can be found in nature in the form of graphite or in the form of diamond. And in that case, it's all just made out of elemental carbon. It's just how the individual carbons are arranged relative to each other. So we call it them allotropes. The same thing here with elemental oxygen and ozone. Ozone is still what we consider elemental oxygen. It's just in a different form. This form, when you have three oxygen atoms stuck together, is very unstable. Therefore, it's highly reactive. Okay, and that's what makes it so dangerous, is the fact that it's an unstable molecule, and so therefore, when it com comes in contact with something else, such as skin or rubber or plant material, it's gonna react very quickly to do what we call oxidize, which is gonna cause a breaking of the bonds of whatever it comes in contact with and adding itself oxygen to that particular um, compound that it comes in contact with. Okay, so this is ozone. When I say ozone, this is what I'm talking about. All right, ozone, okay, so what's the problem with it? Well, I just said it was nasty and it reacts, so that means uh, it affects your respiratory system. Um, if you breathe it in, it's going to affect you, even in normal healthy people. The, the problem a lot of times with carbon monoxide or nitrogen oxides, you know, and smog and whatnot, that really affects people who have compromised um, immune systems or compromised um, respiratory or cardiovascular systems because it puts an extra strain on the heart and the lungs.
but ozone, even for normal healthy people, it can cause um, health problems um, at very low levels. For example, um, if healthy people are ex exercising outside and there's a high concentration of ozone that day, tropospheric ozone, it can cause coughing and sneezing, chest pain, and even pulmonary congestion where you get um, um, mucus in your lungs. All right, it's dangerous, it's very dangerous for small children and people with reduced lung function already because if it can affect a healthy person with a normal lung capacity, it has that much more effect on people with a small lung capacity, which are small children, and people that have some kind of lung disease that's reduced their um, lung capacity. It can also damage plants because it's gonna react with whatever it comes in contact with. It's very, very reactive. It damages like the rubber parts to your car, bumpers and um, tires, it causes your tires and bumpers and whatnot to wear out faster because whatever it comes in contact with, especially carbon, carbon chains, it's going to react and break the carbon-carbon bonds and add itself um, to that molecule. So, um, you know, it's, 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 um, it's dangerous stuff. So, um, I still haven't told you where it comes from. I've just convinced you that it exists and that it's bad.